we are coming at the time of the conclusions. Already these remarks were so, some, somewhat conclusive. Uh, dear uh, digni dignitaries, dear colleagues, dear friends, first I want to thank all the speakers, all the, the three moderators, Rolf Feuer, uh, Dominique uh, Leglu, Mampela Ramfele. They did a really a good job. This, uh, this uh, round tables were really very interesting, uh, at least uh, for me. Uh, I want to thank the organizers again and all of you for this uh, ceremony. You belong to the family of supporters of basic sciences and sustainable development goals. I will repeat uh, the draft statement of the year. Basic sciences are curiosity and inquiry driven. They are the foundations of education and the sources of discoveries which turn into applications which can serve an inclusive sustainable development, improving global equity and well-being together with a healthy and lively planet. All together, education, discoveries, applications, and inclusive sustainable development must boost collaborative and open basic sciences. This is the virtuous circle that we want to promote during this international year of basic sciences for sustainable development and after. To achieve this goal, we shall need you, teachers, scientists, the private sector, decision makers, and the society at large to share this vision and act accordingly. So as I said uh, in my, op my opening remark, Already, we have 49 international scientific unions and research organizations which are leading this international year as, as members of the steering committee. Uh, and 110 national science academies, scientific networks, and associations are supporting the movement. We hope and we know that this figure will increase all along the year. These unions, organizations, academies, scientific networks, and associations are the foundations for the success of the year, this is international year, and for further initiatives beyond this international year. All these organizations will set up thousands of events during this international year, which will inspire greater engagement with science, encourage young people towards careers in the field, highlight the value of fundamental research for society at large. These events can be local, territorial, national, regional, and also flagship global events in each continent. For these flagship events in each, uh, in each continent, we foresee already one event in Vietnam in September on science, ethics, and human development for Asia. One event also in September in Serbia for Europe on basic sciences and sustainable development. One event in Rwanda for Africa on uh, basic sciences for survival. One event uh, maybe not yet decided in, in Morocco for Arab speaking countries on mathematics and quantum technologies. We are discussing with Honduras, one event in Honduras for Latin America, for South America, uh, probably on open science and hopefully one event in North America and one event in Oceania, which remain to be defined. We also hope that thanks to the support of its president, a major IYBSSD event could be organized under his auspices during the 77th UN General Assembly, and that, that this event may lead to the, funda may lay to the, fund the foundation for a decade of actions which that will follow the IYBSSD 2022, a decade of basic sciences for sustainable de development. To achieve this, we need the engagement of UN member states and hope that those who have supported us so far will help, starting with Honduras and Vietnam. What could be the indicators of success which could be highlight, highlighted at CERN at the closing ceremony. First, the number of, of events, their geographical distribution, their participants, 
and their impact. Second, concrete commitments from governments, parliaments, to appropriately funding basic sciences over the next decade. Third, investments and programs on STEM education and on the promotion of educational programs aimed at bringing future scientists and engineers and policymakers closer together. Fourth, initiatives to build solid bridges between science, policymakers, and the rest of the society in order to use evidence-based decisions and not fake news for the solution of global problems. Five-fifths, mobilizing all forces for a sustainable development, for global equity, and a healthy, lively, lively planet. To conclude, let's uh, symbolically I was not permitted to, to do that physically. Let's uh, symbolically enlighten the torch of knowledge for a better world. Thank you and see you in other events. Merci beaucoup, Michel. Excellencies, honorable ministers, dear scientists, dear colleagues and friends of science, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to conclude this opening ceremony for the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. Let me once again extend to all of you my humble and sincere gratitude for your participation for sharing with us your knowledge, information, experiences, and lessons learned of how to put a face to science. Let me sincerely thank all those participants who were unable to make it to Paris. Let me also thank the ministers who have joined us today, the speakers, the moderators. I want to humbly thank also Professor Michel Spiro and his team who have worked tirelessly to bring this to fruition today. I want to thank the Republic of Honduras, the Honorable Minister who has been with us today, and all the other ministers who've traveled from afar to share with us. But I also want to thank all the natural science sector of UNESCO, my dear colleagues, who have worked very hard to make this happen. I want to thank Ahmed Fahmy, who's defended this also with Michelle Spiro in the General Assembly, I want to thank Amal Kasri and all those who have acted behind the scenes, who have worked tirelessly days and night, despite the pandemic and despite the COVID, to bring us here today in this successful ceremony. Thank you very much to all of you. But I also want to thank all those who've acted behind the scenes. All the invisible that we do not see. I want to thank all those responsible for the logistics, the security who have enabled us to meet here today. But I also want to thank our exceptional translators. Thank you for being able to translate the science. During this event, we have seen how basic sciences can help to identify mechanisms, but also to make the best use of scientific knowledge and information. I have the most difficult task here today to close this particular ceremony. And I think I'm going to be a little bit bold and share with you some ideas and thoughts. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Transformation is already happening. The problem we have is that transformation is in the wrong direction. What we need is more and better science. We need basic science. We need scientific research. We need systems. We need research platforms. And we need international scientific solidarity. 
We need interdisciplinarity, and we need all the streams of science to come together, including the local indigenous and rural information that can contribute to a better world. Now, how many people know that they owe their smartphone to the discovery of a transistor radio in a physics laboratory more than half a century ago? You will agree. There's no lack of complex problems to solve in our contemporary world. We've heard of climate change, the water crisis, the biodiversity loss, the food crisis. But did you also know that half of the elements which exist on Earth today could be in short supply within 100 years? So there is support for basic science that makes economic sense. But science is not a flash in the pan. It needs investment. Science systems need to be supported. But today, eight out of 10 countries invest more than 1% of the GDP. So this is my appeal to the world leaders today. You cannot achieve your national development strategies and your national development economies and your knowledge-based economies, and you won't be able to feed the hungry nations that you lead unless you invest in your basic science and research, unless you invest in research for development. We need to nurture our young people, our children at a young age to appreciate curiosity science. We need partnerships. We need to define STEM education for the future. But even though science may be an important driver of innovation, we must not lose, science, we must not lose sight of the fact that it is driven by curiosity. Basic scientists thus need the freedom to dream and to contemplate. Years or even decades can pass between a eureka moment in the laboratory and a concrete application. 2030 is round the corner. It's not enough. We must invest for the future because there is no planet B. We must invest because it's ethically correct to do so. We must promote basic sciences because it is the beating heart of sustainable development. Now, scientists have always learned from observing nature. Remember how, four centuries ago, an English scientist called Isaac Newton developed his law of gravitation after observing how an apple fell from a tree. Human progress has been built one step at a time by men and women around the world who over thousands of years have been driven by curiosity to ask why and how and who have done everything in their power to answer those questions. As Isaac Newton himself put it, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Let us then seize this opportunity of the International Year of Basic Science for Sustainable Development to give our scientists everywhere in the world a chance to stand on the shoulders of giants to see further. Like music, science is universal. We've had the pleasure of listening to exceptional musicians, and I would like to thank them too. But have you ever wondered about the mathematics in music and how every chord and every sound is harmonized? And this is the millennium seconds that brings this harmony in the music. So arts, culture, and science are all interlinked today to give us the harmony of the ecosystems that we live in. But if we cannot measure the science, how can we manage it? We really indeed must put a face to the basic sciences. In the context of the pandemic, the vital importance of basic sciences has, brought, has been brought into unprecedented focus. The world is indeed in a race against time to rethink development strategies. And we must all collectively contribute to a better world. We must definitely put a face to science. Excellencies, in closing, I would like to say, basic science is something of an unsung hero. Despite being the source of new knowledge and the basis of all the countless applications even bringing us here today, that has transformed our world and made our lives more comfortable. Unfortunately, 
The vital role for basic science in sustainable development is so often overlooked. So join the movement and let's put our hearts into this beating heart of basic science for sustainable development. I thank you all. I thank the participants, hundreds who have joined us and unable to be with us here in Paris. At UNESCO, your home. Please take back the message. We need more and better science. We need more women in science. We need more basic science so that we could live better because there is no planet B. But we must protect this for nations to come. We must put basic science to the heart of every one of the SDGs, not just for 2030, but beyond. I thank you very much. Stay safe. And please welcome back home again to UNESCO in the future. Thank you.